A lot of you have said that you like my pack and chip videos. If that's true, keep watching. Hi everyone, I'm Vicki with Avante Avenue. Welcome to our channel. This video is a pack and ship video, or you could say it's a what sold in pack and ship video. Either way, they have to sell before we can pack it, right? Let me explain. I've decided to just set up my camera and video my packing of all kinds of things, from simple things to fragile things to, to awkward shaped items. I decided just to go ahead and video a whole variety of things. So my pack and ship videos are going to be a little less structured than last year. They're going to be very random, very random things. In fact, I have so much video just from this weekend that it's going to be two pack and ship videos or sold and ship videos. Or you could just say it's a pack and ship video on steroids because I'm packing in a lot of videos into one video. Oh, and something I want to let you know if you're leaving a comment, but you're not signed in to YouTube, I'm getting a flash notice that there's a comment, but when I go to look for it again, it's gone. So be sure you're signed in when you're leaving a comment. If I didn't comment back to you, it's because I didn't even see your first comment to be able to do so. I just saw a flash notice and the comment wasn't there. So make sure you're signed in. This guy's a garage sale find and he's a little bit flaky. Pun intended. Department 56 Flake. Meet the Flake Snowman Head with a Toothpick. It's an ornament. Paid $2 at a garage sale. And I have a 25% sale going on right now on Christmas items. Sold for $18.71 plus shipping. Let's take a look at this Meet the Flake Snowman Head. And even though I said he has a toothpick, he might actually be missing something on the end of that toothpick. I'm starting out with a piece of foam wrap and you will find a link to all of my pack and ship supplies in the description below this video. I am concerned about protecting that toothpick and protecting his nose. So I'm going to try something here, starting with a cardboard tissue roll. Yes, TP paper roll. Just make sure all the toilet tissue is removed. Because this is so delicate, I decided just to use some regular tape. This video is going to be a combination of voiceover and some music. Let's do a test fit in the plastic container. Looks good. I don't feel any movement. Let's take some measurements and see what size box we need. Looks like we need a 7x5x5. Five by five. Yes, I keep a variety of boxes on hand. Using one sheet of half inch large bubble wrap, we're going to protect the case. And because it didn't quite fit, I added a half sheet on top. It gives me something to tape to and protects it at the same time. I added my thank you label. It's a pretty good fit in the box, but let's add a little more bubble wrap to make sure it doesn't move around and to protect the top. I have said in a past video that I've been trying to find cut glass. And I forgot that I actually did find some cut glass. Four pieces of cut glass actually, but this video clip is for a lot of two. Faceted heavy cut glass crystal and sharp. But this set had some flaws. It had a few chips around the rim underneath the cap. I have about 50 cents into it and sold the set for $16 plus shipping. Using two sheets of the foam wrap, I'm going to wrap each shaker individually. And this time I'm using masking tape. It's what I mostly use in my packing. Let's wrap each shaker and one sheet of half inch large bubble wrap. I have two of these heavy duty dispensers. One, I came up with the idea of putting this masking tape in it, which is very inexpensive to use compared to shipping tape one for the shipping tape and one for the masking tape. And you'll find a link for these in the description below the video. 
One of our subscribers said these dispensers were game changers when it came to packing and shipping. I'm going to use a 7x5x5 five by five by five box, and even though these are small, this is still rated 32 ECT or 32 edge crush test. The whole sheet of the large bubble wrap isn't quite working, so I just decided to cut it in half. I layered it in the bottom and added the shakers. They didn't fit side by side and they wouldn't fit on top of each other, so they're kind of off centered. So I added an air pillow to fill in the space. Let's give it a shake. Nothing's moving. That's a good sign. And if you're new to my channel, you probably don't know this, so this is a tip for you. I write the first and last initials of the buyer, a dash, and then the state abbreviation so that I can avoid any mix-up of shipping labels. It is very, very rare that I would have the same initials in the same state. I found this little Santa at a local thrift store, paid 50 cents for him. This little figure is just made from resin. It was designed by David Freikman. Just a little Santa figure paid 50 cents last year and it sold for $14.96 plus shipping. This is the typical way that I wrap figurines. I take a sheet of tissue paper and from the corner I just run my hand down through it and elongate it and just wrap it around the figurine. Sometimes one sheet is enough and sometimes I add more. I'm using one sheet of half inch large bubble wrap and on the diagonal I wrap them up and tape them up with some masking tape. If you're new to my channel, I just want to say that my pack and ship videos are very detailed. They are step-by-step how-to tutorials so that you can learn from it and know exactly how I pack things. Of course, I fast forward where I can, but I do show you exactly how I pack it. And topping it off with a little more bubble wrap. You want to make sure it can't move around. In our What Sold for Christmas video that recently came out, I talked about selling stained glass ornaments. The stained glass snowman ornament that I have about 50 cents into sold on sale, 25% off. It sold for $11.21 plus shipping. And I thought I'd open this and show it to you. This is a cute stained glass snowman ornament. I recently mentioned this tip in the Christmas What Sold video. I'm going to show you how I pack it. Using some scrap cardboard, I just cut a piece that will fit the ornament. And using masking tape, I tape the ornament to the cardboard. And one step further, I'm wrapping it in large half inch bubble wrap. Again, you'll find links for all the packing supplies in the description below the video. Why did I double wrap this and reinforce it with cardboard? Because I'm going to mail it in a padded envelope instead of a box. Because it's glass, without doing these extra steps, I don't think it would make it intact. But doing it the way I'm showing you, they've always arrived safely. This heavy item came from that log cabin estate sale and we paid $2 for it. It's lead crystal and very heavy. Paid $2. Again, I have lots of sales going on this time of year. It sold for $16.97 plus shipping. This ashtray is extremely heavy. The reason I'm using the foam wrap, one, to protect the finish, and two, for great presentation to the buyer. Plus, I get to tuck the foam wrap inside and help fill that hollow area. Let's wrap it in two sheets of large half inch bubble wrap and tape it with masking tape. Yes, I go through a lot of tape and yes, I stock up on it. I want to use a Priority Mail shoe box. That's what they call this size. And because I want to use air pillows on the top and bottom, I make sure I have those in place 
while I'm marking where the new fold line will be and keep watching because we have to cut new flaps too. Always measure your flaps, the original flaps, and know what they measure. For the most part, they measure about two and a half inches. I cut off the excess to reduce the length of the box and then, again, allowing for new flaps, that first line that I made, I'm going to score it. Flip the box upside down and score the other side. And I do recommend a large cutting board. I just picked this up at Walmart and it's my favorite cutting board. I am not sponsored by Walmart. Again, I marked off for the new flaps and then I scored the box. Now we need to cut new flaps because of course we shortened the box and cut off the original flaps. So to do this, I slip a smaller cutting board inside the box. When I make the cuts for the new flaps, I try to make it match the opposite flap on the other end of the box. And sometimes it's a little strip that's cut out rather than just a single cut. Then simply keep rotating the box until all of the new cuts have been made to create the new flaps. And I'll show you. I use a ruler or a straight edge to fold back the new flaps. And just to reiterate, the trick to this was making the flaps the same length as the original flaps. It may not be as perfect, but it works just fine. Let's see how it fits. Two air pillows go into the bottom. The test fit is showing me that it's still a little bit too loose. I'm going to add some more bubble wrap. This is a trick I do quite often. If I still have a little too much movement, I save my I save my paper towel rolls and the toilet tissue rolls again with no paper left on them whatsoever, and I use these to fill in some space to keep things in place. Two more air pillows go on the end, and let's get this folded up, taped up, do a little shake and get it in the mail. If you're enjoying this pack and ship video, I appreciate a thumbs up and keep watching. There's more. And this next item, I have sold many of these. A two count lot of vintage amber hobnail pattern, glass votive cups. I typically don't pay more than 25 to 50 cents each, and they sold again on sale 25% off. They sold for $8.96 plus shipping. I used to use tissue paper for almost everything that I packed to ship, but I've really come to love this foam and I think it makes a really nice presentation while being a great first layer when I'm wrapping glass and fragile items. Roll the votive in the foam wrap, tape it, and tuck in the excess to the inside. Each votive cup gets one sheet of half inch large bubble wrap and as always I'm using masking tape to seal them. I've had some of these USPS boxes, box number four in my inventory for a while. I can't find them on their website right now, but if they come back, I encourage you to get some of these. They have been very short on boxes. Adding my thank you label that I just run 30 up on a sheet of labels. I have a little bit of excess room in the box. So I'm adding two air pillows in the bottom. And two air pillows on top. I can't remember where I found this or how much I paid, probably a couple of dollars, and I don't pick many up like this. This is a vintage Japan Sankyo, if I'm saying that right. I wish I could remember where I bought it and what I paid. It sold for a nice price though, $29.96 plus shipping. 
Sometimes I put bubble wrap and a bag on things for temporary storage. I would never ship it this way. And I wanted you to see the music box. Isn't it cute? Using some plain white tissue paper, again, taking it from the corner and running my hands down through it. I just start wrapping it around Santa. A lot of times for tissue paper, I just use regular household tape. When it's a figurine and it's fragile, I want to make it easy to remove the tissue paper. That's why I use the regular household tape over my masking tape. Using two sheets of a large half inch bubble wrap, I decided to cut it all the way down through the center. I want a long piece of bubble wrap. Let's just wrap it around and tape it, but I'm going to use more bubble wrap than this. I'm adding a half sheet on the bottom where the music box is. Let's roll it up and tape it up. An important thing to do is to check the item that you've just wrapped and see if you find any hard or exposed edges. And that's the case with the bottom of this music box. So I'm going to add some more bubble wrap. So that other length of two sheets that I cut in half, we're going to use it to wrap from top to bottom. I always do a test fit and I often use a large sheet of half inch bubble wrap on the diagonal to help take up space in the box and give a little more protection. A little more bubble wrap on top. Let's tape it up and shake it up. The next item is a Goodwill find. I think I paid $3.99. Seems to be their standard price, standard minimum price. This like new Caruso Pro Set 30 molecular steam hair care system. That's a lot to have to say. Sold for four asking price, $29.95 plus shipping. And you know, I had so many questions on this set. One of them being, how many curlers are there in this set? Hmm, Pro Set 30, a photograph of everything. How about 30 curlers? I love when items are already pre-boxed, but I still check to make sure there's no movement within the box. In this case, I have room to add just a little bit of bubble wrap. I'm using one sheet of small bubble wrap. By small, I mean one quarter inch, just folding it in half and placing it on top. To protect this cardboard box from the risk of getting wet, you know, if the outer box gets wet, I'm using some stretch wrap to wrap the entire box. I don't want any cardboard exposed. using a 12 by 6 by 6 box, again rated 32 ECT edge crush test. I'm testing out a couple of different ways to place the curlers, to place the curler box inside the eBay box. There's a little bit of room left over, so using a half sheet of small bubble wrap, putting one in the bottom, placing the curler box on its side, and then one more half sheet of small bubble wrap on top. Got glass? We do. Lots of glass. And this next item is vintage, glass, and fragile. This is a four count lot of Anchor Hawking Sereno or Sereno, however you like to say it. Green glass glasses and that 1970s avocado green. Probably have about $4 into them and they sold for full asking price of $29.95 plus shipping. So yes, vintage glasses sell, and yes, some buyers are willing to pay shipping. We have four glasses to wrap, so I'm going to tear off four sheets of the foam, and I find it best to start a little tear at the top and then just pull on it from there. Let's roll the glass and the foam wrap, folding up and taping and then tucking the excess inside. I always fill the hollow area in anything that I can. I'm cutting a half sheet of some old bubble wrap that I have on hand so it's a little smaller than my half inch large bubble wrap. Then repeat the process for the other three classes. And as I've been doing throughout the video, I'll speed this up. Now that each glass is wrapped, I take a measurement. I'm going to try to use this eight by eight by eight box. 
I didn't have room for air pillows on the bottom, so I'm cutting a piece of large half inch bubble wrap to size, to size meaning just to fit the bottom of the box. I'm placing the glasses with the bottom side down, but sometimes I do alternate. It just depends on how they best fit. Using four cardboard tubes from toilet tissue, again, tissue all removed. I'm going to use these in the corners of the box, all four corners. What I like about using these cardboard tubes is that I can pretty much compress them and shape them to fit exactly how I need them to fit. I use them all the time. Never had any complaints. To finish off the top, let's add some more large half inch bubble wrap. And since we need a little more bubble wrap, I'm just adding some scrap pieces that I have on hand. Let's fold up the lid, give it the test shape, and it's good to go. I always cross tape my boxes, sometimes adding extra tape to these sides, and then write the first and last initial of the buyer and the state abbreviations on the bottom of the box. If you like this video, jam packed full of pack and ship videos, please give us a thumbs up and be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm Vicki with Avante Avenue. I'll see you soon. Simple sales for good profit.